guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for TV. Tonight we're going to have a little story about men going soft. And no, I'm not talking about that late night when you've had too many drinks and you're, you're with somebody that you really don't think you should be there with. But this is about um, society and young men today going soft. And we've talked about, uh, in the past, we've talked about how uh, young men today are told that they need to be in touch with their feelings and they need to uh, understand uh, all the dynamics in a relationship and what she might need to be feeling to to make her happy and and no means no and and uh, you know you need to take all these cue and what's happened is men have just said that's it I'm out I'm too confused I don't understand what's going on I'm out I'm out well this is a story and this is the first story I'm gonna read is written by a gentleman and he's saying and, and let me record so you guys can see. We can all play along here. He's stating that millennial men have gone soft, but it's not our fault. And this is a man writing this. So I think what he's saying is it's not men's fault for guys going soft. So let's, let's read through this, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. So we've got, uh, he says, uh, is it just me or have men gotten really soft these days? These are the words with which last week newscaster Tommy uh, Lauren, who is a, a woman that broadcasts, I think, for a conservative site, took aim at millennial men the world over. In an abrupt two-minute video clip, the 23-year-old American who works as the host of a uh, topical conservative commentary show fired barb after emasculating barb at the modern masculine identity. She branded young men pansies and claimed that growing a beard and wearing a flannel shirt does, doesn't make you a man if you still can't change a light bulb. I agree. Before wrapping things up by lamenting that we helpless young men now prove slim pickings for women. Well, I don't know. Uh, this, this is what you wanted. This is what this, is what this kind of, of generation asked for. You wanted the participation trophies. You said all, all masculinity was, was poisonous and awful. And well, that, it's gone. And, and here's what you're left with. I don't know why all the surprise all of a sudden. This is exactly what you asked for. Lauren, who, is, uh, who has a following of almost a million Facebook users and frequently courts controversy with her reports, was quick to defend her views during, during the segment. This has nothing to do with uh, sexuality, she clarified. It has more to do with the helplessness of today's young men. Who's to blame? Are we getting too strong? Oh, the strong woman argument again. That is so tiring. Give up on that, please. Because the minute you say that, men are just like, I'm done. I'm done listening to you. Like you have nothing left to say. I don't buy that because a real man knows how to handle a strong woman. Please teach your sons how to be men because the world, uh, the women of the world are tired. You know who you're talking to? You're talking to the 46% of single women and the 40% of divorced women that are the majority of mothers that are closest to single parent households. Those are the women raising your boys. Where's the man? Where's the man to teach the masculinity? Hmm, not there. Gee, I wonder whose fault that is. So guess what? Sorry, can't help you. If the young man don't have a father figure or masculine friends to look up to, then how is he going to learn any of this stuff? And number two, masculinity is bad, remember? Can't have any of that. So if you're tired of it, you better start talking and writing columns to other women about it. So the author again writes, and so here's where I must wade in. For the sake of argument, let's brush aside some of Lauren's more glaring examples of self-serving double standards. I could point out that if a man had posted such a video, he would be strung up by a feminist mob. Or I might discuss that had traditional gender roles not been outgrown, she wouldn't have even had the platform to make her point. But instead, I'm going to do something that might even render Lauren speechless. I'm going to agree with her. Millennial men as a whole have gotten soft. The technical skills and staunch can-do attitudes that characterize the manly generations of our past have largely been snuffed out. Cast aside as society progressed and gender lines became increasingly blurred, masculinity to all interests and purposes has lost its edge. And you are correct, sir. I agree with you. Uh, between the commercials and the TV shows and the movies and the news articles and Twitter and Facebook and, and just, again, everything just shoves it in a corner. 
You know the Gillette ad last year or the year before, whatever it was. Just nope, all of it's all of it's toxic, all all of it's bad. Get rid of it. It's gone. Congratulations, you won. However, I can't chastise Lauren's views without also holding my own hands up. I have spent a good deal of time rolling my eyes at millennial men who lunge at the yellow pages at the first sign of manual labor. I am fully aware that the majority of my friends would be stranded at the side of the motorway if their cars developed a puncture. Needless, cars don't develop punctures, tires develop punctures. I wonder if he can change a tire. Indeed, when my last year of university drew to a close, I'm almost positive that I was the only male student in my year to not only own a socket wrench, but to have used it as well. Study published last month confirms just how useless many modern men have become. Only one in five young men would feel confident tackling a dripping tap. Two-thirds of millennial males don't know how to change the oil in their car, and just three in ten men are comfortable with the assembly of a flat of a flat pack furniture. I guess that's like the boxes that you have to assemble yourself. This is a sorry state of affairs agreed, but it's not really our fault. I gotta agree with the dude here. Like, it isn't their fault. You know, uh, so you guys know I've talked about it many times. I'm converting a bus into a, a school bus into a, uh, an RV. I'm doing carpentry. My father taught me that. I'm, I'm doing the, the plumbing and running water lines. My father taught me that. I'm running 110, which is volt, 110 volt, uh, and 12 volt throughout the whole system. So I'll have alternating and direct current all through the system. My father taught me that. And his gra- grandfather taught him. My dad's also a mechanical, or a mechanical engineer, so it does kind of help there. But, but without that masculinity, without saying to a father, to a son, here's how you man up, here's how you learn how to fix something, here's how you, you protect your family, here's how you take accountability for what you do in life, without that role model, you're getting young men being raised essentially as girls with flat chests. You know, like you're, you're getting effeminate men, and, and this is because they don't have the male testosterone the bravado the masculinity it's so awful it's gone again i don't know who you want to blame but the only people i can blame are not the young men today it's not their fault it's it's the parenting over and over again men have been chastised by women for not being in touch with our emotions or unable to open up in relationships but the first generation to take the emotional plunge is now forced to endure endless whining from women who complain that we're not the strong archetypes of masculinity they see, still seem to think they're entitled to. It's a classic case of wanting your cake and eating it too. Womankind can't have it both ways, and now they're second-guessing their decision to encourage, encourage the sentimental, emotion, emotionally aware men. It's too late. The floodgates have opened and a torrent of man bags, male grooming products, and feelings has washed away any remaining vestiges of traditional manliness. I disagree if you're outside of a main city, if you're outside of a big city, and you're at least here in the United States. I can't speak for other countries, but I know some of some of you Aussies in the outback, some of you farmers in the UK. I have met you guys, some of the, the, the sheepers. I don't know what you call them, but sheepers out in New Zealand. You know, I've met some and and Iceland I mean there's plenty I'm running off a, a, on a tangent here but the, in the Midwest and the United States there anybody that's outside of a major city that still has uncle dad grandfather in their lives they're men trust me they're still men but I, I think this goes back to the young men in the cities probably more than anybody else because that seems to be where all this all this stuff is is most popular I guess I could say And yes, perhaps the ebbing tide has worn too much macho off the face of masculinity. I agree that a man should be able to negotiate a fuse box and have the capacity to tell a Phillips from a double hex, as indeed should women. But in many ways, new masculinity is paving the way for a safer and happier future. Not so sure about that. I don't know about you, but a safer and happier future... It was safe when you had a man of the household that if you think somebody is breaking in, he reaches over and picks up something baseball bat whatever and marches off in the other room to check it out that's what men do as far as happier i don't know about you but my mom my aunt and uncle my grandparents all of them have been married 50 plus years they they're old school where the women stayed and and again i'm not saying this is the way it needs to be today i'm just saying the way it was ladies okay so don't jump on me here but all of them had traditional roles Uh, my mother when she finished raising us kids by the time we were 
12 or 13 and we could be left to home alone, she went to go get a job. So we had extra money and she had something to do and could get out in the corporate world. But all of these families that are old school, they had the traditional roles. Now, I'm not saying that's what needs to happen today to be happy, but you at least need a man in your life in many cases, I think, to, to bring in this safety, to bring in this happiness, to bring in this masculinity. You know, with divorce being you know so cheap, easy, and free, darn near free for the women, because guys even have to pay the court costs in many cases. There's there's virtually no downside except for this about ha casting out dad. We may have been more attractive as strong and silent, but without sharing, the number of untreated male uh, cancers would increase, and both depression diagnosis diagnosis and self deletion would continue to rise. We've still got a long way to go in those areas regardless. A recent study commissioned by the Samaritans revealed that only 19% of men felt that they could talk to each other about, that they could talk to other people about their problems. My gosh, man, learn to use a period. For exactly that reason, Lauren's entreaty for men to shut their mouths, man up, and stop sharing their emotions is beyond the pale. On the whole, millennial men might not be quite as effective as assembling cabinets or suppressing their less manly emotions as Lauren would like, but I'd much prefer that my friends call in a tradesman once in a while rather than going through the maelstrom of mental health issues. Surely that's not such a difficult, difficult argument to grasp. Well, okay, so your friends um, being masculine and being able to figure out things is, is, I, is worse than, than going through a maelstrom of mental health issues? You gotta be kidding me, man. And that tradesman you call in to fix everything? What do you think he is? You think he, he the, the tradesman's not some Ivy League, you know, white collar dude. That's a guy that grew up learning to tackle problems. And he likes doing those things and he gets paid well for it. I don't know what the average, average uh, price that like plumbers and electricians and mechanics and AC techs get in roofers, I, I don't know. Uh, roofers, maybe not as much because that's more more just uh, manual labor. But for the the elect electricians, for plumbers, man, I think those guys are 80 or 100 bucks an hour here in the United States now. You want to talk about someone that's making some dough, there's your man. So just to say that that because men are less masculine, the, the mental health problems have gone away too, you're backwards on that one, my friend. Right now, we've got growing problems with uh, self-deletion, right? Young men being depressed, young men's young men being unhappy, young men not dating, not getting married, not uh, not involving their lives in other people. They many of them sit in front of a computer like this and play games and have friends online and sit around drinking, you know, coke or whatever. They're they're not interacting with people. That's that's worse than it's ever been before. I'll take the society. And again, this sounds old school, but you know, I'll take the society of, of 30 or 40 years ago where guys were just guys. Now, yes, could they have not harassed women and, and whistled at them and given cat calls and so on and so forth? Yeah. You know, we can say that let's meet in the, in the middle halfway. Let's keep fathers and mature men and the, the masculinity in these young men's lives, but let's teach them how to navigate through the society that is that we're in the middle of now today. I, I, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I do this channel. And I've heard from many of you young guys out there that you don't have uh, role models that you can look up to. And the only ones that you do have is guys like myself online. And I'm very flattered, those of you that said that you, I'm like the, the uh, dad or the older brother that you've never had. That makes me feel good. That's great. I'm not old enough to be your dad. I, am, I mean, I am, but don't say I am. Call me older brother, right? But I had that advantage. I had a great father, and, and, and he, I still have him, you know, 85, 86, whatever he is, years old. But a lot of guys don't have that today. And, and to blame the young men today for all the problems and all the woes, that's not fair. But, but to, to say that, that going back to when men were masculine is going to bring mental health issues is just, that's a cop out. You can have both. You can have masculine men, you can have strong men, you can have smart men and good fathers and good role models and good supportive figures that can still teach their young men how to properly act around women, how to properly be a gentleman. Now, these men, if they're smart, will also teach uh, young men 
the, the nature of dating games and will point them towards information like we talk about here. So they'll, they'll be at least well aware of what they're going to get into should they decide to date, should they decide to maybe pursue sue marriage and maybe have children someday. At least they'll have an idea of what they're up against. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, thank you all for the support that you've given me recently. Uh, as always, please comment, like, and share. All of that does great things to help me get my channel out there and to, to uh, uh, get the information to other men that may need a little bit of help. In the same token, if you'd like to support my channel, links are below for my uh, PayPal and my, my uh, Bitcoin accounts. So if you'd like to drop me a buck or two, I'd appreciate that as well. Guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. You have a good night. Thank you.